Oh, we've had some fun, haven't we, guys? We're canceled. It's Sports Center with Jane Dan, brought to you by McDonald's. And the exciting news from Monday night, Dan. No NHL games in the bubble, but the NHL draft lottery, right? And you had a lot of interesting teams who could have had the chance of that number one pick. That's right. It all depended on the ping pong balls. It all depended on the balls. And uh, I remember, uh, I believe it was on yesterday's show, I had my own prediction where I thought this was going to go. Hmm. I feel like the Rangers... That would be pretty sweet for the NHL. Gary Bettman would be dancing all over his crazy <laughs> furniture in that apartment that nobody That's understands. Right. All those throne chairs. He'd be so excited about that. <laughs> wow, let's see if you were right. Gary was there. Yeah. He had to confirm all the logos of the team. Make sure everyone was correct. Mm -hmm. They didn't get a California Golden Seals <laughs> logo on one of those balls. Okay, so. The Who won? Whose ball is it? It's the New York Rangers. They won the draft lottery and the right to Alexi Lafreniere first overall. Didn't come without controversy when the balls were being loaded in. The Rangers, they fell in before it was confirmed and had to be reloaded. I cut uh, Roberto Luongo's eye on Twitter. New York Rangers ball looks a little heavy with the thinking face, but I think you'd want your ball to be light in this situation. Anyway, either way, the Rangers are now on the clock and could be adding the consensus top prospect. Led the Qs with uh, 112 points in just 52 games last season. Um, Rangers, uh, an unreal team with uh, really good players and um, you know a, a really nice city. So um, for sure, it's uh, really good news, and um, I'm really happy. Along with the skills is competitiveness. I think uh, if you go back to the World Junior, if you follow him in Ramuski, right away you can see that he has the kind of talent uh, that we're all looking for, but he also drags everybody in the battle with him, and uh, we're all looking for a player like that. Oh, it really is exciting, um, for sure. Panarin is, uh, you know, one of the best players in the league, and, um, you know, Zibanejad and guys like that, um, you know, for sure they're um, a really good team, and, um, you know, I think they, they're going to have a lot of success in the... Uh, you know, in the next couple of years, so um, for sure it, it's pretty fun. A lot of people have slowed down the ping ball, ping pong ball machine and saw that the Leafs were about to go up and then they got knocked out of the way by another ball. Um, what'd you think of it? The entire process. Well, I, I just, I want to know who that guy was who was loading the balls, because he seemed like he was a whole bunch of nervous. <laughs> and probably not the right man for the job. <laughs> Uh, here's your uh, here's your draft order. The Leafs not going to have a pick in the first round because that belongs to Carolina as part of the Patty Marlowe trade. Only the first overall pick would have been protected. Hey, they already know their first round playoff opponents. Lowry, Van Vliet, and Giannis did not play. So is Monday's Raptors-Bucks game essentially meaningless? Not according to this promo sent out by the NBA. Raps, Bucks, Matt Thomas, Pat Connaughton. A showcase of the immortals. That's right. Uh, the Bucks are going to take on the Magic in the first round. The Raptors will face the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, Giannis actually had surgery to take care of a toothache on Monday. That sounds awful. First quarter, Matt Thomas. We mentioned him. He's the Iceman, of course. Uh, Matt Thomas was played by Val Kilmer in the original Top Gun film. Wait, there's dentists in the bubble? I guess uh, there's dentists. There's got to be doctors. Uh, there's, there's a barber shop. Um, there's all sorts of stuff there. Uh, there's just not strip club chicken wings. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have to go outside of the bubble to get that. Uh, Thomas had 12 in the opening frame. Lowry hamming it up. He knows he's on camera. He says to Fred Van Vliet, Hey, Fred, we're, uh, we're on camera. Fred. Fred. Fourth quarter. This might get Van Vliet's attention. The pass stolen. Boucher! Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right there. Yeah, oh, Matt man. Devlin on the call. Fired up. Yeah, Chris Boucher of Montreal. Beautiful stuff. Then Thomas again. Four of seven from beyond the arc. Set a new career high with 22 points. Boucher also set a career high of his own with 25 to go with 11 rebounds. And seals it late with this layup as the Raptors take it. 
114-106 is your final. Rap, there's basketball. It's basketball. Live Wednesday. Taking on the Sixers. Should be fun. Um, yeah, should be fun. I think it's tough for him because I can guard him and he can't guard me. Here comes Butler. Warren spinning him around and Butler not happy with that. He's not even in my lead. Nowhere near me. And Warren right back on Butler. Oh, Jim. Put a shoulder into the chest of Warren and then Warren just got himself tossed out of the game for Taunton. I think you just got to watch your mouth in certain situations. There's that you just don't say as a man. If I was their coach, I would I would never put him on me ever again. Put somebody else on me because I'm, I'm a tad and we had to go back into the archives for those clips. January 8th of this year, the last time the Heat met the Pacers, Jimmy Butler destroyed T.J. Warren. Monday night, the rematch inside the bubble. Really trying to figure out, okay, These teams could meet in the playoffs. Identical records, currently fourth and fifth in the East. Warren has Butler in the post. Jimmy gets a hand in. Initially ruled Pacers ball. They changed that decision. Second quarter, Warren from deep. Get 12 first half points. Just one field goal prior to the break for Butler. But he does get it to Bam Adebayo for the dunk. He had five assists. Nothing between him and Warren in the first half. I think, I think the bubble has eased their tension. In the third, Warren gets Butler to fly by, misses the jumper. He was quiet, just five of 14, didn't score in the second half. Butler attacks, layup. Plus the foul, he finished with 19 points, 11 boards, four steals. Heat up 14 after three. In the fourth, Derek Jones Jr. Into the passing lane, splits a pair of defenders, and dunkage. Heat win quite easily. Okay, so here's the situation in the race for fourth in these. The Heat win. So that puts them a game up on Indiana and a game and a half ahead of Philly. Both Miami and the Pacers have just two games left. The Sixers competing in three more. Miami, last two games against OKC, Indiana. Pacers face Houston and Miami again. And the Sixers play Phoenix, Toronto, and Houston. Hopefully, you follow it along. You're watching Jay and Dan on TSN, brought to you by McDonald's. L.A., the Lakers have lost their last three games since clinching top seed in the West. They're hosting the Denver Nuggets, who are still jockeying for position with Houston in the West. Who will finish third? Who will finish fourth? We don't know. Michael Porter Jr. for three. He's averaging over 25 points since the restart. Anthony Davis throwing down that alley-oop pass. And then Kyle Kuzma misses with the brow on the putback. He had 27 points playing very well in the bubble. Very well. Looking very dangerous for the Lakers. Nikola Jokic, how about that pass to Paul Millsap? And he gets blocked by LeBron. State Farm board is gone. Millsap thought there should have been a call. Tied at 121, four seconds left. Kuzma from beyond the arc. A terrific look. Makes the game-winning three over seven foot two. Ball, ball, the son of the new ball. Kuzma had 25. Lakers back in the win column. Thunder and Suns. Phoenix, the last undefeated team in the bubble. 5-0 and oh since the restart. A game and a half back of a playoff spot. OKC rested for their top five leading scorers in this game. Second quarter, Suns down 11. Chris Paul in transition the other way. Lobs it up for Hamadou Diallo, who throws it down. Athletic play by the 2019 Slam Dunk Contest winner. Devin Booker averaging almost 30 points and shooting 50% from the field in the bubble. He knocks down a three. Booker, uh, he's got nowhere to pass it. Shot clock winding down. Watch where he launches this one from. It's in from the logo. Booker mishandles the ball, runs it down, but gets uh, it's taken up by Diallo from behind and Booker. He gets up, has words for Diallo. Brooke and Diallo, both Kentucky alum, although they never played 
the same time. Booker 35 points as the Suns are 6-0. and oh. uh, So it's a tight battle for eighth and final playoffs. Well, Memphis a half game up on Portland. There's going to be a two-game series to determine who gets into that final spot. All right. Let's walk. Pass the producer, Tim 9000. That's going to clothesline someone one day, or if it hasn't already. Mm, you missed uh, last week's set of shows where producer Tim himself suffered a very bad injury. <laughs> See, he's okay. He's not. Hey, the Montreal Canadiens opened their playoff series with the Flyers on Wednesday, and their young centers, Nick Suzuki and Jesperi Kotkaniemi, they're going to be challenged once again after playing well against Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin in the qualifying round. The Habs are hoping their young forwards can step up against the Flyers. And Maple Leafs head coach Shelton Keefe received some criticism following his team's Game 5 last Sunday. His counterpart, John Tortorella, defended him. I just can't get over people ripping Sheldon Keefe and his staff as far as the job he's done with that the Maple Leaf team. He, they have done a terrific job with that team. And, and this is after the series and all that. And some of the things I read, some of the things I watched last night, I mean, half the pundits in this city think they really know about the game, but they really don't. And it, it just pisses me off for a, a fellow coach in this league. And I know it's Toronto, a great city, great hockey town, love being here. But some of the things that he has criticized for is beyond belief to me. And, and it just shows that people have no clue what's going on in this game. So uh, I just want to uh, support him. I'm glad we won. Uh, but I want to support him and because I, I think him and his staff have done a terrific job with that hockey club. Thank you. Hmm. Don't see that kind of thing a lot in torts. Right? Coaching fraternity. Yeah. It's, uh, when Torts is stepping up for you, must be doing something right. Well, there you go, Keith. You're never going to get fired. <laughs> when we come back, plenty of great moments from the NHL's qualifying round. The top ten are next. Brought to you by McDelivery. We spotlight Chris Boucher in a game where the Raptors didn't have Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Vliet, or Serge Ibaka. Boucher delivered with a career high 25 points. Also grabbed 11 boards off the bench, leading the Raps to a 114 106 win over the Giannis Adetokounmpo Les Bucks. Would you guys like to see a little baseball? A little Rays Red Sox? How about Sox rookie Jonathan Arauz? Arauz. Looking for his first career hit. No shame in this when you're robbed by one of the very best in the field, Kevin Kiermeyer, three-time Gold Glove winner. Going way up to get that one, Michael Chavis not happy with Kiermeyer robbing the rookie. J.D. Martinez off to a slow start this season. Hasn't had an RBI since opening day. Bottom three. Ding it! Martinez launches a high deep. 425 feet. That ball is way out of Fenway. First RBI in 14 games over the monster. Back to Kiermaier. He's cold at the dish. Hot and feel. Cold at the dish. He's like a McDLT. <laughs> Slices one to left center. Five all in the seventh. That'll score a pair. He went to 4-3 RBIs. First multi-hit game of the season. Rays take it. There's Mr. McDLT. Rays and Phillies. Philadelphia dropped both games of a doubleheader to Atlanta on Sunday, only scoring two runs. Bryce Harper. Oh, man, that hair. Two on, ball gone. Now, they have a group of about 30 people that sit outside the stadium. Listen here. They bring air horns. So we're watching it on a TV outside the stadium. Harper went uh, one for six on Sunday. He has his fourth home run of the year. Harper back up next inning. Yikes. Luckily, he had a shield on that hand. Sean Newcomb uh, hit him. He stayed in the game. Base is loaded for Didi Gregorius. Oh, my goodness. Wake up, Gramps. We got a granny. It's 30 of the year, makes it 9-1, and we're only in the second. 
Yeah. Braves center leading the league with 86 RBI. Aaron Nola coming off a 12 strikeout performance. Picks up two more of his 10 Ks in the sixth. He went eight strong, only giving up two hits. The bullpen almost blew it. As the Braves scored seven in the ninth, but the Phillies did hang on to win it. 13 to eight. Fanatic still working during the pandemic. Well, he's permanent face covering. Never takes a day off. The Jannies. Good plays, bad plays. We got them all. Like Devin Booker. From the logo. Booker. My goodness. Drainage. 35 points in just three quarters. Phoenix, mentioned it earlier, they're 6-0 and in the bubble. 6-0. and Jonathan Arauz, the rookie. Deep to left center field. And there is Kevin Kiermeyer, the three-time gold glover. And Michael Chavis, not happy. He's like, go, go. And then he's like, ah. We had to pixelate that. There's children watching, Chavis. Or is Chavis starred in the Shield? White Sox, Tigers. Danny Mendick at the dish. It's one off the shin of the first baseman. Daniel Norris, this is the play. Yo! Daniel Norris does not give up on the play and gets the out at first. Mm. Crone. Yeah, he's a got hit in the shin. It looks like he's going to cry. You got to hate that kind of thing. Norris was OK. Brace Phillies, Didi Gregorius. Throws them for strikes. Ground to first, Freddie Freeman. It's a race to the bag, and Freeman wins it. Oh man, still not quite in baseball shape. What is baseball shape? Um, when we went to break, I said it was uh, the end of an era at TSN. Yeah. Yeah, that happened Monday. Bob McKenzie. He's gone. Well, he's not gone. I mean, he's uh, he's sort of semi-retiring uh, because he will be here for what uh, free agent frenzy and uh, for Trade Center, and I think he's doing a handful of games. The World Juniors. juniors. There, there was no hockey insiders before Bob McKenzie. Right. He was he, the first. He invented that whole concept, and uh, we're gonna miss him around here yeah. because. Uh, I don't think it's any secret Bob kind of runs this place, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone kind of knows that. Yeah. Uh, here's James. Thank you, yes. Just like the Leafs and the Oilers and the Jets, we're losing Bobby after the qualifying round. You may have seen it on social media. Our TSN legend, the original hockey insider, Bob McKenzie, entering what he calls soft retirement. Uh, he'll still be around for the World Juniors and the draft and Trade Center and Free Agent Frenzy and all the important stuff on TSN, but you'll see less of Bob on our network now, and that saddens me. Are you ready for this? Well, you know the big reason, James? I, I just have to confess, I, I really don't like working with you, so... No, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to disarm myself with uh, not to get too sentimental here. But as you point out, I mean, it's not the end of the road. As mm -hmm. I said uh, in a little uh, note on Twitter, this, the social media this morning, uh, it's just moving into the slow lane a little bit. So still here for a lot of events. But in terms of being the 24-7 day-to-day hockey insider, yeah, I'm going to try and find something else to do with all that time. What are you looking forward to most? Besides golfing with me on a regular basis? That, I'm trying to learn golf. It's not going very well, so we may have to try and take up something else. But in any case, I don't know, just um, not to be consumed by the job at all times. Mm -hmm. And Darren Dreger will tell you, and Pierre Lebrun will tell you, and all the guys that do this kind of work, you can't go to a social function without... You're there and you're, what's going on? What am I missing? Something must be happening. And and so now I'm going to be in a position where it's going to be like, yeah, well, don't care. <laughs> I'll have another drink, please. Well, uh, <laughs> after doing this for how long, if you count the writing days, 35 well, years? Well, I graduated from Ryerson's Journalism School in 1979. So mm -hmm. I kind of graduated. That's another story. But uh, yeah, so it's 40 plus years. Wow. So it's uh, You've earned this. It's been a long time. And as I say, I'm not done yet, but I'm. Mostly done. Well, I've said this. Uh, it's it's been a true honor to be on the opposite side of this panel for 20 odd years to you. Uh, a true privilege, and we know you'll be back, so we're not saying goodbye. But uh, thanks for everything. I know I say on behalf of everybody out there who's watched you and read you for all these years, man. It's been an honor and a privilege. Well, thanks to everybody, and for the guy on the left, from the guy on the right, thank you. It's a good guy.
Still never invited you to the cottage, though, did he? Yeah, that was the ongoing theme <laughs> whenever I'd say, so Bob, just hand me that uh, cottage address whenever you get a chance. Not, not a chance. And the thing is, you live very close to that cottage. It would be a very quick drive for you. <laughs> yeah. You probably live the closest to Bob out of anyone who works at TSN. You would think you would have been the first person who would have been invited. No, I'm literally the last yeah. to... I should point out, I also haven't been invited to, uh, to his majestic spread. But we love Bob so much, and he always had time for us, always yeah. came on the podcast. Um, yeah, just the best guy. What now you see is what you get, basically. Now it's just margaritas. Yeah, now he's just going to be crushing margaritas. But I don't believe when he sees news on his phone that he's not going to chime in. He's going to be all over Twitter, chiming in on stuff. Well, he always uh, reviews wine, I think, too. That's right. Wine reviews. Okay. The Jane Dan Podcast brought to you by McDonald's this week. Annie Guglia, she is a competitor in skateboarding for the Tokyo Olympics, which will hopefully be taking place in 2021. Uh, she was fantastic. And that's who we spoke to this week. Check it out wherever you get your podcasts. Worst play of the day, Sox and Tigers. The White Sox and Tigers. Inside. Kobe Jones, lines one to center. Three, Adam two, Engel, charging, charging. Oh, he missed it. Uh, misses a ball, rolls to the wall. Jones comes around to score. There's been a bunch of inside the park home runs so far this year. That was not close. No. That's the worst play of the day. And that means it's time for a demonstration of the producer Tim 9000 social distance script delivery system. And I'm as excited as you guys are. Thank you, Francesco Pietropalo, sending it over to me safely from a six foot distance. Uh, this beauty really pays for itself. And it was expensive. Um, producer Tim expensed it, of course. Two years Highline of the, the night, Raptors, Bucks, Chris Boucher, Canadian! It two he had a career high, I want to say 25 points. 25, yeah, 11 boards. Uh, Chris Boucher, Canadian. Look at the Raptors. It was 25 and 11, right? This young fella. Not only can he I think so. Them. That's right. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. Okay, yeah. good. So we got that right, but we messed up one other thing, or I did. I said the NBA playoffs tip off earlier next week instead of early next week. Sorry about that. Uh, also, we wanted to point something out. We noticed that Jeff O'Neill has some serious bling going on in that ear. Very Harrison Ford late in life. But this is how I think you could improve it. <laughs> right? He walks around looking like that. Oh, look out. If he wanted attention, that would get it. I mean, just getting an earring at his age is going to get attention. I like it. You going to get one? It's unique. I used to have one. Bring it back. Everything that's old is new again. Yeah, I'm good. That the hole's kind of grown over. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that's been hole talk. <laughs> so now I'm going to be in a position where it's going to be like, yeah, I don't care.